Okay, so evening everybody. Welcome to the 2014 Academy team parent meeting or information meeting. Um, I know this is, there'll be a lot of new information handed out. This is the first time we're doing this at club um, in this format. So uh, it's new to you guys as parents um, and it's new to us as staff, but something that we are really, really excited about so uh just reminders we've all been on a million zoom meetings but just please keep yourself on mute um there will be a question portion at the end i have some standard questions that i will that i'll read off and answer uh, hopefully that that gets through the majority of of the information that you guys are looking for uh but then if anybody has any questions uh happy to answer them right at the end so we've got about 20 slides i'm with with some, some info for everybody. Um, so again, don't take up too much of your time. So we're gonna get going. Um, my name is Darren Patricio. I am the director of the foundation phase for Loudon Soccer, which is uh, on the travel side. I take care of the U9s and 10s, um, along with, with our director of, of coaching, our technical director, director of player development. Um, but I, I coach in there and then I, I help uh, Dan Rabin with the U8 Academy the U7s uh, free academy, uh, and then I run the minis and, and rec one uh, on the rec side. Um, you can see I've, I've done a couple different different roles um, in the soccer world. I played for a couple of years as well um, at, at college and uh, uh, semi-professionally, so uh, done a little bit um, uh, from myself. Uh, if you're wondering where I'm from, I'm from South Africa. Uh, and if you don't recognize me, I'm usually in a cap uh, on the field with with the boys uh, coaching the boys u8s uh, and i'm hanging around helping the coaches with the girls uh, when needed so tonight's agenda we're going to talk about the structure of the team uh, the uniforms and fees the club pathway and the development framework age age specific objectives uh, those three are part of our framework that we put together at the beginning of of this season um, for our entire club and I just want to relay those that message to you and show you how it relates to the UA Academy kids, um, both the, the kids that will be part of the team, but also then how it relates to, to our regular Rec 1 program and then in the U8 program, where uh, the majority of, of the families on the call will, will be a puff. Um, and I'll, I'll explain everything as we go forward. We'll then talk about our periodization plan, which is um just the weekly planning and what your schedule will look like if you're in the team um important dates uh what we look like on the field so how it'll look different from a saturday in the u8 academy game uh, and then i have i think 10 questions at the end that that we've put together um we think everybody's looking for the answers to but hopefully within the first uh, 18 slides i will answer all of those, and then that'll just be more of a, a recap at the end. So again, hold your questions till the end. Um, happy to happy to answer some some things at, at the end if if we don't get through it. So first off, um, and probably what everybody's looking for, I will coach the ball team. Uh, coach Kelsey Surkamp, who is on the call, she's just she's busy with her little ones, uh, so she's not. Uh, I think she'll jump on, so you can see her face if you haven't already. Uh, done a deep dive in the coaches slate uh, and who the coaches are. Uh, so you can see what she looks like, uh, if you don't know already. Hi we guys, both coach in... <laughs> there she is. So uh, we both coach in the U9 and 10 age group uh, on our current travel teams within the red and black structure, uh, which is our two top teams. Um, within the team structure that we will put together, we will select 10 to 12 players of each gender to be a part of the team. So that will be where we, we go through our player placement uh, sessions, which will be December. Uh, and we'll go into more detail about those uh, as we go forward in, in the important date section. Um, but we will pick 10 to 12 players. The reason we will select only 12 is because, uh, again, this is a pilot project for us, something that uh, we, are, we think is desperately needed um, within the club. Uh, but on each roster in the NCSL is the division that we will play with. You can only have 12 players on the roster. So we don't want to uh, overextend ourselves and make promises and have, have kids sitting out. 
Um, so that will be the max. And there's no guarantee that we will take 12 players. We need to make sure in those player placement sessions that every single player is ready to play in a travel setup uh, on a 7v7 field and be a part of a little bit more intensive training than, than what they're used to right now. And so that's why we've, we've left it up to, to 10 to 12 players um, for the team. Uh, there could be movement between the team and the program if necessary. Um, so again, as we'll go through the weekly structure, you will see that, that the team and the program players will train at the same time, same location. Uh, so there they could be movement for players to come in and train with, within the team structure. Um, and if we feel that someone is, is struggling a little bit and maybe needs to go play in an academy program game on the weekend, that may, that may happen as well. Um, but that's that, those are things that uh, we don't we hope won't 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 need to happen, uh, especially going from the team into the program again. Um, but uh, we we need to make sure that the development of each child um, is taken into account and, and what's best for them in in any moment. Um, so uh, within the NCSL, the teams will play as the fifth travel team within the U9 age group. So that is the 2013s. Um, right now we have a red team, black, white, and silver on the boys and girls side. This team will come in and essentially be the gray team within the structure. Um, and the, the exact details of who we will play against within the league um, are still up in the air. We don't know what the, the season's just ended for the girls and boys in, in the league um, format. So we will wait to see which teams uh, participate uh, from other clubs. Uh, whether we play against other U8 teams or whether we play against um, lower teams within uh, another club's structure uh, is still is, we're still waiting to to find that out and decide uh, for ourselves what's what's the best way forward for each of our groups. The uniform fees the fee is slightly different from what you would have paid if you were joining the spring program and the winter program. Uh, that is because. There are different costs that will go into, into um, the structure of, of the team. So just a couple, there's on, on the website, there, I, there's, a, there's a ton listed um, of, of expenses. So everybody's uh, aware of, of where your money's going. Um, but within the club training, uh, so you'll pay for the winter club training, uh, which is part of, of your Sundays. Um, Again, we'll go through some important dates and what your weekly structure will look like. And we'll go into more detail once the teams are selected. Um, the winter age group days, which will be um, starting on the 8th of January for the boys, and it'll be every second Saturday. Uh, and for the girls, it will be beginning uh, 15th of January, and that'll be every second Saturday. Uh, but again, Coach Kelsey and I will go through those dates in more detail once the teams are selected and we, and we have our, our player uh, we have our team, individual team meetings. Uh, the cost also includes Spring Training Academy, which the U8, um, the 2014 Academy team players will join the U9s uh, on Wednesdays. Again, all of this will go through everything that, that's got a date next to it or associated with it. Uh, we'll go into more detail for the, for the players that are selected and the families that are selected. Um, league membership fees and fees, uh, local, state, uh, region and national uh, fees, referees fees, and you will receive an additional pair of socks uh, because uh, having so many training sessions, number one, and only having one pair of socks is, is a problem. I, I, I have two little kids. I, I know you, you don't want to have to do laundry every day. Uh, and uh, honestly, I'm a little OCD. So for me to have my team wear white, black, or, or red, bla uh, white, black, and red socks uh, throws me off a little bit. So I pushed for for that, so I apologize for the extra ten bucks that that you have to that you have to pay towards uh, your child's fee. So within the club pathway, this is part of the framework. Uh, you can see that the recreational program is the foundation of of our of our club, uh, and that's where the U8 Academy program sits currently. We feel that there is a need for the better developed players to be able to push themselves, and for us to push them which is why we want to push those 10 to 12 kids into the travel program, essentially uh, a little bit earlier than, than we usually do. Uh, we feel that currently the U9s 
that are in the travel program are lacking a little something. Uh, and we think that pushing the, these these 2014s uh, and players from uh, for future seasons, uh, pushing them into the travel program a little bit earlier will help them adapt a little bit quicker. Um, and in, in essence, it's not just the top team that'll get pushed. Everybody else will get moved up a level. So in those play days where we play against VSA, Great Falls, PSA, everybody will move up a level. So everybody within the academy program is being pushed just a little bit more um, to, to the level that, that we want them to be at. Um, again, we won't push anybody too, too far beyond their limits. Uh, but just because the top 10 are moving up and the focus is not on the top 10 or 12 players, um, it's everybody moving up just a little bit more, um, moving up just a little bit more so that they can get pushed uh, and the gaps are a little bit closer once um, once our team step into travel soccer at U9. The phases that, that we have within our club, we have essentially five phases, two in the foundation phase, uh, one purely for rec and one that incorporates some travel. Uh, those are uh, foundation one and foundation two. So the U8 Academy program and team both fit into foundation two, uh, which is just basic understanding of the game. Uh, and I think you've, you've seen that for those that are part of the U8 Academy program currently, you've seen how hopefully how that, how that relates on the field and how we're pushing that as coaches and as a staff. Um, and then later on, we have the learning phase, developing phase and performing phase, which we're not too worried about right now for, for these kids that are coming into uh, the U8 Academy program or are in the U8 Academy program. Um, those are those are things further down the line, uh, but the program is is more of a, a on the rec side, and the academy team is is pushed into uh, the travel side slightly. Um, even though our training sessions are geared towards travel sessions, even in the academy program, um, they're slightly different to what you would see on a regular rec field. Uh, so that's just how that relates to the player growth and the, the phases within our. Uh, framework. So within the foundation phase, the eight specific uh, objectives, we have technical objectives, character objectives, physical objectives, and game concepts. I'm not going to run through everything um, on this list right now, because uh, that's those are for individual meetings and, and, and things that we don't have to worry about right now. Um, but we'll go through a couple like the technical objectives um, and the game concepts so that you can uh, better understand uh, what we're looking for for each player from a technical point of view and as a as a technical staff. Right, so within our technical objectives, we have five objectives that we're pushing towards uh, within our training sessions. Number one is ball mastery, which you've all seen. We do ball mastery every day, and that's just right at the beginning. Um, after our, uh, our scrimmage, when, when the players come in, we get them into some kind of a format where we work on their ball skills. Then we get each week is broken up uh, into four different categories, dribbling and disguise, which is basically one V1s or two V1s, which we do a lot of passing and receiving, which we started to do a little bit towards the end of the season, ball striking, which is incorporated into many of the sessions within the small goals and different targets that we hit uh, and finishing, which is, uh, not something that we that we've pushed within the fall season, but something that will get pushed within the program and the team uh, for future uh, in the future for the spring season. So this is how it's laid out for our current travel teams at U9 and 10. We work on a two week rotation. So ball mastery is added into every single session or at least every single week. And then dribbling and disguise, passing, receiving, ball striking, finishing are broken up into uh, two week blocks. So within the spring, that should work that we do at least uh, one of those uh, activities or one of those topics uh, once uh, for a two week block. So that's four sessions uh, essentially with your team. Uh, and then when we have the training academy on Wednesdays that gets broken up into that day as well. So uh, that is, it could be six sessions, but at least four sessions where we are working on one objective and that objective will then get relayed into the weekend. So just like the program, we, we try and relay the, the topics into the weekend. Um, same with the team. 
the topics will get pushed for the weekend. Uh, so we're not coaching four or five different aspects of the game. We're focusing on one, uh, one aspect uh, and how we can do it differently. Um, so there might be three different objectives within that one topic for the weekend, depending on your coach. Like the game's concept. So we have small games with small groups, progression games, unbalancing, finishing, and game intelligence. Um, this may bore you, but this is something that's, that, that uh, we do. So I, I want to explain it to you so that you can see it. The game will go into more detail uh, with myself uh, in, our, in our team meeting. Um, Kelsey may also touch on it. But small groups is, again, 1v1s, 2v1s. Progression games is how we can add players into the game. So once you win the ball, basically how you can add a player in. Uh, unbalancing, how we can create 2v1 situations uh, within the game and on the field. And then finishing games and, and then game intelligence, which gets incorporated into every aspect uh, of the game concept. So uh, it's important that that we teach game intelligence within the players. And again, we'll run through those. Uh, not going to go through too many details about that right now, um, but we'll we'll definitely have a chance to run through those once, once the team is selected and how it gets broken down. And then once the program players come in to the to the travel setup, uh, it'll get broken down even further for, for those players. So this is what the weekly planning for your winter will look like right now. Uh, it's only Saturdays and Sundays. So it's again, boys uh, on the 8th of January, every second week, they will be on the field with the, the current U9s. And then the teams will have their own individual indoor session um, with, with either Coach Kelsey or myself. We also have TDP, which is the technical development program, which runs on Wednesdays, uh, which um, you may be a part of uh, if, you, uh, if you're in the team. Um, and if you, you'll also have a chance to do some travel futsal. Uh, if you're in the program, there is the indoor uh, winter sessions that Coach Dan uh, has, has uh, let you know about. And, and hopefully, I, I know a lot of you have signed up for that already. There will be a couple of outdoor sessions. Um, I know for the boys, we will have four outdoor sessions during the week. Um, and that schedule, once it gets provided to us um, in indefinite, we will then share it, hopefully by the time the team is chosen um, and the uh, and everybody, hopefully we have those dates ready for us from our, our fields team and we can then relay that to you. But I know the boys will definitely have some outdoor sessions uh, from the middle of February um, as we prepare for the season. Um, I'm sure Coach Kelsey will, will add some or, or get the, the girls into her current training setup as well. Um, but be prepared to, to be outside um, for a couple of days if, you, if you're in the team. In-season training will be on Mondays and Fridays as it currently is for the academy program. So it was important for us to make sure that, that the team and the program are, are integrated. So uh, the, the players will not be on the same setup as you currently know it right now, uh, where Coach Dan, Coach Royce, Coach L, Coach Dean, um, and when with the boys, myself, uh, how we are on half a field at Loudoun Soccer Park, the team will have their own space, hypothetically, on the other side of the field um, because they need a little bit more space. They need the bigger goals. Uh, they need to prepare for a 7v7 um, game on the weekend. So they'll be allocated a little bit more space. And again, how this relates to making everybody a little bit better. The boys side, you, you lose a couple of kids into the team from the program. Everybody's afforded a little bit more space. So the coaches are able to, to integrate 4v4 games more often. They're able to integrate bigger spaces more often. Uh, and we can then teach the, the players a couple more concepts. With, with the girls, same thing. There was only teams anyway. Um, but with, with 10 girls moving to the other side of the field, again, small, uh, slightly smaller groups, we can play bigger games more often, uh, and we can, we can then teach game concepts within the training session uh, where we sometimes weren't able to do that right now. Um, so that'll be Mondays and Fridays, same time. Girls will be five to six on Mondays and six to seven on Fridays. 
with the current program players uh, and the boys six to seven and seven to eight. Um, and again, it's, it was it's important for us to integrate the, the two the two groups. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, if we're able to to move a couple of players across and get them into training sessions, that's that's great. Um, and if we if we need to then move some players from the team and into the program, we can we can also uh, do that if if needed. But uh, that won't happen too many times during the week. Uh, for six weeks, training academy will be on Wednesdays. Uh, the first day, I believe, is April 6th. Hopefully, my notes are all right on there. Um, and then that'll run uh, nothing during spring break, but then uh, the following weeks, the following five uh, Wednesdays, they will be on the field with the current U9s. And then we put games Saturdays or Sundays. Um, usually, NCSL games take place on Sundays. So it's, it's, that's the only big difference between uh, what, what the current... Uh, training and game environment is between the team and the program. Uh, the program will still continue on Saturday mornings, whereas the team uh, could play games usually on, on a Sunday. I know currently our, our U9s and 10s only had one Saturday game, I, I believe, um, or one scheduled Saturday game. Um, so uh, be prepared to be on the field on, on Sundays. And, and there's no set times. So once the schedule comes out, uh, it's no... It's no longer nine o'clock in the morning, girls, 10 o'clock in the morning, boys. Uh, the schedule will be uh, varied each week. Uh, but again, Coach Kelsey and I will go through that um, in more detail once we get the schedule, uh, but touch on it maybe a little bit more once, once we get the team together uh, and we can have our, our current team meeting. So some important dates. First one, the player placement session on the 4th and 5th of December. So one note, um, only two families had signed up for, for the Sterling location. So we decided to cancel that day uh, or that time slot. Loudon Soccer Park and Lightridge are still on as, as scheduled. So um, April, uh, December 4th in the morning will be Loudon Soccer Park and you'll receive more information closer to the time. And then Lightridge on, on Sunday afternoon uh, if you signed up for the South Riding uh, area. Um, the next one is the first winter age group training is the 8th of January for the for the boys, uh, the 15th of January for the girls. Um, all the schedules, you, you won't receive uh, an email from Coach Dan any longer regarding schedules. Everything will get done through an app called TeamSnap. If you have a child in the current travel program uh, and you make the team, you, are, you, you know what TeamSnap is. This is just a scheduling app where we can send out as coaches, we can send out information uh, regarding schedules, uh, emails, uh, and different kinds of uh, files and, and documents if, if we need to. So um, we, will, we will use that. You'll still get the odd uh, email. Um, I'm not 100% sure how Coach Kelsey deals with it, but I work solely with, with Team Snap. It's, it's just a, a lot easier. Um, 9th of January, we will be indoors with our first uh, team session. Again, more information will be provided once we select the, the teams. Uh, and the fields team um, at Loudoun Soccer has provided us with our schedules. Twenty uh, first of March will be the first day of spring practice. Um, that might change. I, I believe U8 Academy starts a week earlier, so we will see how we how we make that adjustment. If we start with the current uh, with the, the U8 program. And if we go Mondays and Fridays from, it would be the 14th of March, or whether we start on a regular travel, um, regular travel schedule and starting on the 21st of March. Uh, we, but we still have lots of time be between now and then. We have lots of time on the field. Um, so hopefully uh, that's not too big of an issue for everybody. Um, 30th of March, first technical academy session. So those are the Wednesdays. Again, the week of, um, the week of uh, spring break and, and when the kids are off school, there won't be any technical academy. Um, April 2nd and 3rd is the first weekend of NCSL games. Uh, be prepared on that day. Usually NCSL for some reason books a double header Saturday and Sunday. So uh, again, it will depend on how many teams are part of the league, how many teams are, are part of the division that, that we get placed in to see how many games we have over the course of of the spring. 
uh, but just be prepared for, for that. And again, we'll go through more detail um, in our team meetings. March or April, we would like to play in a tournament. There are very few tournaments that uh, we can enter, given the fact that we wouldn't have played a game uh, up until the first weekend of, of April. Uh, so do we throw the kids in and, and put them in a tournament in March when they haven't played a game of 77 yet? Or do we wait until April? Uh, that's something that we will discuss as an individual team once the, the players are selected and we have our team meetings. Coach Kelsey and I will, will decide within our groups what this way forward is and whether we want to um, whether we want to participate in the tournament uh, or whether we want to just skip that and, and go into uh, regular league play. Within the tournament, uh, your fees don't cover the tournament cost right now. Um, so that may be a slightly extra and additional cost to Emily. Uh, but again, once we make our decision, uh, we, will, uh, we will definitely let everybody know what that cost is. And then 23rd and 24th of April will be the 2022-23 U9 player placement session, which, which is important for all of our, our U8 Academy program players and our Academy uh, team players. We want to create at least four teams per gender so that we can participate in the NCSL. Five would be ideal. Um, so right now, if your child does not make the team, it's not the end of it's not the end of the road. We have rec. If you're part of the rec program and the commitment to to the U8 Academy program is a little bit too heavy. We have the U8 Academy program, which most of you are a part of, and I, I assume and I hope that you all enjoyed that. So would come back if you don't make the team. Um, but our U8 Academy program is essential to us to create the number of teams that we want and that we need uh, to, to participate in, in the travel program at U9. So uh, just because your player doesn't make the team doesn't mean it's the end of the road. Uh, they're still young. Players develop different rates. Some are just developing a little bit quicker right now. Uh, maybe it's they have a birthday in January compared to December. Maybe uh, there's a whole bunch of factors that, that could go into it. Um, so give it time. Everybody's still still young, but we want to be able to push out players, which is why we, we're creating the team. Uh, but U8 Academy program is essential to us to, to create um, enough travel teams uh, for U9 and, and next season. So back to our framework a little bit. Uh, within our style of play, there's four moments within the game, attacking, transition, attacking to defending, defending and tra transition bending back to attacking. So one is, uh, two of them are when we have the ball uh, and another two when the opponent has the ball. Uh, not going to go into too much detail again. Coach Kelsey and myself will, will go into how we play specifically within our team meetings, uh, but just so everybody's aware of that, uh, the four moments of the game that are standard throughout um, any, any soccer game or, or setup, not, not just loud in soccer. Um, so within our club framework, the team possessions, we want to progress the ball, we want to unbalance, and we want to finish. Right? So to progress, we need to be able to pass and receive the ball, we need to keep the ball. We need to break lines. Breaking lines means if our defender has the ball, how do we get the ball to our striker because we can't? How do we break the line of, of the midfield? So again, those will be um, the progression games and, and adding players in 2v1s, 3v2s. Uh, you'll see a lot of that uh, within the team structure and the sessions, as well as uh, the, the program structure and um, sessions. So unbalancing, how do we dribble? How do we play with disguise? which means going one way and playing the other. How do we run with the ball? How do we combine with each other and then finish with ball striking uh, and breakaways? So those are important to us, part of our framework uh, as, a, as an entire club, not just within our foundation phase, not just within our, our U8 academy program and academy team. Um, the opponent's possession, we have general, right? How do we deny penetrating pass? So we want to create penetrating passes. How do we deny the other team? Uh, the nice goal scoring chances and then be compact, which just means uh, get as close the ball as quick as you can um, so we don't leave spaces and gaps. It's a little bit different from how you, you know the academy 
program is set up on Saturdays with uh, the diamond shape within our uh, within our team. We will play in a 7v7 form. Uh, our primary formation is a goalkeeper, and we will use these numbers. So uh, within the team, uh, definitely for the boys, we'll have to learn these numbers because they are related to each position. Uh, so two, a, a goalkeeper, two defenders, three midfielders, uh, and one striker. You can see how it still creates the diamond shape, which is why uh, the diamond is important for us at the UA Academy uh, program with on those Saturdays. And we have a secondary shape, which is a goalkeeper, three defenders, one midfielder, and two strikers. Again, there is still the way that, that it will work. There is still a diamond in there. Uh, so again, the important, uh, the important game concepts that we are teaching the players in the program are still related to the 7v7 setup uh, and how the team will be coached, how you can see uh, what we're looking for, uh, the slight difference between the team um, and the program within when the game day. Right, so a couple of questions. Um, at the end here, so these are these are questions that we've put together uh, that we think that everybody's uh, wanting to ask. So again, I've, I've, I've probably touched on a lot of it. So I'm gonna go through some of them pretty quickly. Um, and then at the end of this, uh, I'm done talking and uh, we'll open it up if anybody has any anything. So number one, why form a team? Um, we wanted to create um, a, a, a training scenario and where we are, we are pushing the better developed players. Like I mentioned, um, everybody uh, is, is learning at a different rate. So the current players we feel need to be, which is why uh, we're creating that team. Uh, what happens if my child is not selected? Again, we have the U8 Academy program, which if that's the right fit for you and your family, and we think it's the right fit for you and your family. Uh, we want as many players as we can get into that program, uh, as long as it, it again, as long as it's the right, the right situation and the right fit for for your child. We have the rec program, uh, where we currently um, have have tons of teams, 100, 156 teams, I believe. So uh, we have lots of lots and lots of options within um, the club if your child does not make a current team. Um, will my child be disadvantaged for next season? Uh, the simple answer is no. Again, everybody uh, moves at different rates uh, and develops at different rates. And so they will not be disadvantaged. And again, we want to create four to five teams within our travel program for U9 next season. So by the time fall comes around, we want as those teams um, to come with as many players as can out of the academy program. Um, so uh, again, it's essential that, that we keep that, that program uh, and the, um, the relationship between the team and the program alive. And that's why, again, we put them uh, together in the training sessions, um, Mondays and Fridays, um, as much as, as we can. Is the team and the program separated? Uh, no, I think I've, I've touched on that enough. Um, it, they, they will be together. Um, the only difference is one gets to play 7v7 uh, and, and the other uh, continues to play 4v4. And again, the structure as the season goes on within the program, the structure of the games changes. Um, and I know we had, we had extra players, we had goalkeepers, bigger goals. Um, so again, the rate of learning is different for each player. Um, and and the team is is just for the, the more developed kids right now. But players uh, between now and and the end of April, it's a long time for a seven and eight year old. So uh, players will be able to develop at different rates. Uh, and I think we have uh, one of the best U8 academy staff um, around. There's there's not many uh, clubs that that put the caliber of coaches that that we do onto the field with our with our program players. So um, we know that we're, we're producing and, and putting on the field and giving the, the right ideas players that will help them um, get to where we want them to be. 
and where they need to be uh, for themselves uh, by the end of April, whether they are in the team or the program. What league will we play in? NCSL. Um, again, we'll go through more of that uh, in our team meeting uh, once the players are selected. How many games will the team play? Uh, it's up in the air right now, um, but hopefully we can can at least be in a, a division of eight, so seven games, and then hopefully a, a, a tournament uh, as well, if, if it works out with the schedules uh, and, and what the families want. Uh, and then again, as, as a staff, what we feel is right for, for the players. When will the season end? Again, all depends on the amount of teams, um, but the beginning of June, it could go till the beginning of June, um, but within the program, hopefully, uh, we'll be done before uh, Memorial Day. Um, but again, it, it all depends on the number of teams that, and the division that, that we get placed in and want to be placed in uh, within the NCSL structure. Will my child be guaranteed a spot on the red team next season if you make the team? No, you will not be guaranteed a red team spot. And for those that don't know our travel setup, red team is our, our top team. Um, again, players develop at different rates. Um, so players might catch up. Players might come in from the outside. And on the boys' side, we currently have four 2014s within the travel structure of, of the 2013 age group. And on the girls' side, um, we have two players. Um, so th those are discussions. We don't know if those players are going to come down. Um, those will be discussions that, that each coach of, of, their, of those specific players has with those families. Um, but it is a possibility that four boys and at least two girls um, come back into, into the program. So just because you make the team, you are not guaranteed a spot on next season's top team. Um, what do my fees cover? Again, I've gone, I've gone over all of that. Uh, there's many different, different aspects. And again, we have a full list um, on, our, on our website, on the, the Academy page, and uh, we'll have a more in-depth uh, uh, answer sheet uh, that gets uploaded um, once I'm done tonight uh, and, and will get shared with everybody. Uh, and will the academy team players need to purchase a, uni a new uniform? No, you will not. You will use uh, your print U8 Academy program uniform. You will receive an extra pair of socks. That's part of your, your fees. Uh, if you are from the outside, so from a different club and you come in, you will need to obviously purchase the uniform. Uh, and if you're part of uh, another program, say the Rec Pro, Rec One program, you will need to purchase uh, the uniform uh, because you'll need a number on your shirt. So uh, as long as you are selected out of the U8 Academy program, uh, you will not need to purchase a, un a new uniform, um, but anybody from outside of, of that uh, will, uh, will, need to, will need to purchase um, the uniform. So there's my email address. If anybody needs to get in touch with me, um, again, this will get shared with everybody. It'll get uploaded onto the Academy team page. Um, and again, uh, it, we have, uh, you can access the team page um, through loudandsoccer.com, go under the travel section. Uh, it's not under the rec section, travel drop down, and then find the 2014 Academy team page. Um, and you, you will be able to, to get all the information, um, all the, the details that I've shared, uh, the framework and some of the more in-depth uh, technical stuff uh, is in another section, but uh, in the about section um, of our website. Um, but hopefully I've, I've answered enough questions um, out of those 10, um, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And if anybody else, if anybody has any, any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, again, if you want to email me, I'm going to put my email address um, in the chat, just so everybody has it. Um, but if you, if you have a question, unmute yourself, let me know, and I'll try to answer as best as I can right now for everybody. Hey, uh, good evening, coach. I want to check, I've already enrolled my son for the winter, uh, winter program in Loudoun Soccer and uh, if he is selected for the academy uh, how will that work um, will that fees will get adjusted or I just want to know more on that 
the, the fee will get adjusted. We will we will transfer um, your player over to the academy team, um, and then uh, there'll be a balance within your uh, within your account that that we'll let you know about. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yep. I see a question. Uh, is the Wednesday training academy required? Yes, it is. Um, it is part of it is part of the uh, the travel structure. It is part of the fees that that the families pay. Um, so it, it is for those six weeks, um, instead of um, Monday and Friday only, you will, you, the players will be on the field on a Wednesday as well. So it, it is, it's part of uh, each team and, and each, uh, each, um, each team's um, periodization um, and schedule. Where's the sole practice? Um, Margo, are you referring to the program Sundays or for the Fridays? Both. Uh, Fridays, I am I'm not too sure where, where the Friday is being held at. Uh, I think it's at PAC in Ashburn. Um, Coach Dan, if, if you have that definite answer, Friday, Loudoun Country Day School, um, and same on Sundays for the UA Cap program players. Um, how many girls will be chosen on the team? 10 to 12. What time is the Wednesday? 4.30 to 5.30. So coach, uh, can we say that except Tuesday, every day kids will be out uh, to play? Except Tuesday and, and Thursday, yes. Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, if we're all good, um, I appreciate everybody taking the time uh, to come and, and listen to me talk. Um, this the presentation will get uploaded uh, onto um, the team page. Uh, everybody will get an email uh, once that gets uploaded, so you'll have access to to, to the document uh, and to all the information uh, within the, the page. We have another question, Chris. Yep. No, Go ahead, Christopher. Sorry. No, you're good. I was just saying thank you. Okay. Yep. Of course. Anytime. Um, this was, this is, uh, this program, I heard about this program. It, it was a big push for me. So I'm glad that we can get it up and running. And I'm glad that the, the 2014s are, are the first group uh, that, that we're using as a, as a whole, because I think we have some, some really good players within the, within the age group. So um, again, this will get uploaded. Everybody will, will get an email once it's, once it's uploaded the video as well. If you want to bore yourself and listen to talk again, feel free to watch it. Um, but uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time tonight um, and we will see you on December 4th or December 5th on the field. Thanks everybody. <laughs>